Good morning and a happy and blessed new year to you. I think there are a few slight technical problems due to the weather we're having out on the Atlantic, so bear with us this morning. And it's wonderful to, to welcome our dear brother Chris Dodolis, who's joined us this morning, and for the others who've not logged in, welcome. I'm going to light our first light of the new year and we're going to dedicate it this morning firstly for interspiritual unity that all faiths will come together to Assisi and forgive one another and embrace the divine in each other and secondly we remember today the awful tragedy in Istanbul where many were killed and so many injured due to a bomb that went off, a human bomb, in a disco. And I also want to dedicate it to all my brothers and sisters, past and present, of our community who've come and gone. And we wish them every blessing. And we mustn't forget our friends on social media who've been there for each one of us. So now let us focus on the light. And as we take a deep breath, we breathe in the very breath of God on this first new day. And in the Catholic Christian Church, today is the feast of the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. So let us be still as we come into the presence of love. Amen. We begin this morning with our Sunday morning prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence, excuse me, to all the prophets and teachers who've guided each child of God to be where they're meant to be in their faith journey. And we remember the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. That's you and me who have surrendered our heart to the divine source. Amen. Sunday morning, we commune with the angel of earth, saying, angel of earth, enter my generative organs and regenerate my whole body. And as you say this, you contemplate the life-generating soil, the growing grass, excuse me, feeling the currents of the angel of earth, transforming his sexual energy into regenerative forces. This morning's prayer is going to be eclectic. I'm just going to go with my heart and be guided by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God. The first reading I was given before we started was from the Metta Bahavna, and it's, may I dwell in the heart, may I be free of suffering, may I be healed, may I know my wholeness, and may I be happy and at peace this day. Let's say that again. May I dwell in the heart. May I be free of suffering. May I be healed. May I know my wholeness. And may I be happy and at peace. We dwell in Christ consciousness, the ever-present mystical expression of divine oneness, as it is embraced by the great wisdom teachers from all faith traditions. We embrace the interspirituality of these teachers, recognizing that the ultimate message is a message of love. Love for oneself, for one's neighbor, as well as one's enemy. And through the example of St. Francis of Assisi, we model our lives in the Teo community on simplicity and strive to be the stewards of Mother Earth, Gaia, and to be of service wherever we can be. 
and now I'm guided to read from Jesus now. And as I open the book, we're guided by spirit. Blind leading the blind. In the Christian Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 23, verse 26, we read, You blind Pharisee, first cleanse inside of the cup and of the plate, that the outside may also be clean. Whereas most religious leaders today are faithful and true, some may be no closer to the kingdom of God than were the leaders of the people Jesus ministered to when he sojourned on this planet. Their behavior may differ, but their net result is often the same. People are blindly guided down paths that do not lead to God. The religious leaders of Christ's day were dictatorial and oppressive. There are a few leaders today who are out to entertain, to conduct ego-fulfilling popularity contests, or they concentrate primarily on building buildings, raising budgets, and recruiting membership. They assume that success is measured by statistics. They may be more concerned about their own names and reputations than they are about God and God's purposes. Their ministry tends to be a personal ego trip, and they are more into self-gratification and glory than they are for self-denial and cross-bearing. They shun provocative issues, regard social needs as non-spiritual, and perpetuate an impractical pietism that keeps the emotions high but fails to meet the real needs of God's children. Or, on the other hand, they may be more concerned about straightening out this world than they are about the spiritual vacuum in the hearts of their constituents. The point is that some of them are not proclaiming the gospel of Jesus as Jesus came to proclaim and demonstrate it. They subtract from it or add to it. And the result is a pathetic mismatch that becomes a stumbling block for those who are seeking God. Be aware of the leaders you follow. If they do not introduce you to a forgiving God, as revealed through Jesus Christ, and to discipleship and servanthood as exemplified by him, they may be leading you astray. Let us focus on those words, because as I was reading it, I got a lump in my throat of a painful issue that happened to the brothers and sisters in our community last year, where many of us were turned on our head. And the good that came out of that, painful as it was, was that the Lord was showing us it is so easy to become complacent in one's spiritual journey. And sometimes, sometimes, he puts the cat among the pigeons, so to speak. And before we know it, we have decisions to make. Are we genuinely in service to love? Or are we just playing being in love with God? In other words, do we give lip service to God? with closed hearts, with egos of flame bursting for notoriety and fame, and at the expense destroying the innocent ones who are in service to God by trying to control and manipulate their spirit. So coming back to the quote from Matthew, you blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup, and of the plate, that the outside also may be clean. And being a monastic and divine service is a privilege. It's a privilege because you were called by name. You were invited to the table of forgiving love by Christ. 
by all the great spiritual teachers, you were invited by divine love to surrender your heart to love, not to give away your life, not to lose control, but to be a, a people set apart to give praise to God for the children of God. And my, my life is probably no more different than yours, except that I made a choice to live a simple mundane life. Yes, I have missed going to the theater, a good opera and a, a wonderful musical, and enjoying a Chinese banquet in Chinatown in Manchester where I loved. But they're inconsequential. What's more important is that we remind ourselves who we are, why we're here, and what our life purpose is. And mine is to always keep my heart open and to listen to the voice of the beloved, but I was caught off guard. I was caught off guard recently in my naivety and gullibility, and the lesson I've had to learn was to allow Christ to prove, yes, prove, right down to the roots. And he has done. And this new year is a year of abundance for those who are willing, willing to meet with God halfway and to listen to the words of that invitation, come follow me. A powerful reading. And now I'm guided, <coughs> excuse me, to read a psalm from Psalms now. I have no idea what psalm we're going to read, so we're going to call again on the Holy Spirit of God to speak to all of us, me included. Come, Holy Spirit, in the presence of all the great teachers, choose a psalm for all of us on this first day of this new year. Psalm 91, we read that the other morning. The one whose faith is focused on God and who finds his security in him does not have to live in fear. Oh. He is not left untouched by the tempests of this life and he may be wounded by the onslaughts of evil. How true. But his great God does not leave him to suffer these things alone. The Lord cares for his own and delivers them, even in the midst of the conflicts that plague them. If God is truly your God, you do not have to be afraid of the enemy that threatens or the affliction that lays you low. Men all about you may fall, never to rise again, but the Lord is by your side to raise you to your feet and to lead you to ultimate victory. Even the ministering spirits of his invisible world are watching over you. They will not allow anything to hurt you, except by God's loving permission and through his eternal concern. Our loving God has promised it. Because my child loves me, I will never let him go. I shall feel the pain of his wounds and bear his hurt and shall transform that which is ugly into that which enriches and blesses. And when he cries out in agony, I shall hear and answer him. I will be close to him and will deliver him and I will grant him or her eternal life. Psalm 91. You may be feeling today a new year. What's the point? There is every point. It's a new beginning. And it's about putting on the mindset of a positive attitude that you are a child of God, that you were called by name, that you were carved in the palm of God's hand. 
And no matter, no matter what you or I have done, no matter to what depths we may have sunk in our life, God loves us. God is not a tyrannical leader like some we found in our own community, who on the surface were all nicey-nicey and full of the right words, but underneath their hearts were estranged from God. And that's in every monastic community, as it is in politics, in families. You will always have an individual who will create mayhem, always. I come from a dysfunctional Irish Catholic family. I do, and I'm aware of my traits because Brother Rob reminds me because he had the privilege of meeting my mom a few years ago before she died. And he said, you're just like your mother. And I panicked thinking, oh my God, what part of my mother? Because she was quite manip manipulative and controlling, but she was also very loving and very generous. So let us pray this new day, a blessing of gratitude to what you and I have already received, the gift of love, the gift of faith, the gift of joy and the gift of being called by name to be in divine service for love. Now, from our little UCB booklet we read for the new year, with God all things are possible. I needed to read that. Let's read it again. With God all things are possible. And that's taken from Matthew 19 Verse 26. Let me just... That's better. John Gordon offers practical New Year's resolutions. One, stay positive. You can listen to the cynics and believe success is possible, or believe with God all things are possible. Two, each day when you awake, complete this statement. My purpose is... Thirdly, take a morning walk of gratitude. It creates a fertile mind for success. You can't be stressed and thankful at the same time. And when you combine gratitude with physical exercise, you give yourself a double boost of posit positive energy and natural antidepressants. Fourthly, instead of being disappointed about where you are, think optimistically about where you're going. Fifthly, Eat breakfast like a king, oh, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a college kid with a maxed out charge card. Wow. Sixthly, believe that everything happens for a reason and good things come from challenging experiences. They do. And seventhly, don't waste energy on gossip, past issues, negative thoughts and things you can't control. Invest in the positive, present present moment and eights. Mentor someone and be mentored by someone. Ninths, live with the three E's, energy, enthusiasm, empathy. And tenth, remember there's no substitute for hard work. And eleventh, zoom focus, Ask yourself, what are the three most important things I need to do today? And twelfth, implement the no complaining rule. Complaining is like vomiting afterwards. You feel better, but people around you feel sick. Gosh, thirteenth, read more books than you did last year. Okay, fourteenth, get more rest. You can't replace sleep with a double late, sorry, a double latte, oh, a double latte. And 15th, before bed, complete these statements. I am thankful, mention it today. I accomplished whatever blank. And 16th, think of, think of your mind like a garden. If you weed the negative and feed the positive for one day, it doesn't do much. But when you do it every day, you create a magnificent garden. Wow, I have never read anything so powerful and simple as that. With God, all things are possible. We come now to various prayers. 
from a, a beautiful little book, Prayers and Inspirations from Many Faiths. And today the theme is God forgives us. From Islam we read, say if ye love God, then follow me. God will love you and forgive you your sins. For God is forgiving and merciful. From Christianity we read, verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. From Judaism we read, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man or woman their thoughts, and let them return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will be abundantly pardoned. From Hinduism we read, Fly to me alone. Make me thy single refuge. I will free thy soul from all its sins. Be of good cheer. And from the Baha'i faith, Thou art the all-merciful, and verily thou art the ever-forgiving. He to whom repentance is due, he who forgiveth even the most grievous of sins. <clears throat> Beautiful. And now, let us just be still for a moment as we come back into the presence of God and we bring whatever our requests are this morning. It is a new day. It is the first day of the new year of the rest of our life. So I come in service to God and to you and I bring each one of you this morning into the presence of the all-powerful, all-loving, all-forgiving, all-embracing I Am Presence of God. I thank our, our beloved God for your presence here. I thank our beloved Father, Mother God for our small community of men and women who've dedicated their lives to God for unity and peace within all faiths and peace in the world. And I pray today for all those who are struggling in their belief, that someone will be brought to them and share with them love, maybe a hug, maybe a kind word. We remember our politicians and our religious leaders, many of whom give lip service and whose hearts are closed to God and to the needs of the children of God. We pray for the awful travesty that happened in Istanbul yesterday evening as many were celebrating New Year's Eve where a human bomb went off and I think there were over 30 people killed and many injured, all young people. And we pray, Father, Mother, God, forgive us for the atrocities we do in the name of religion. We ask you to forgive those who say they love you, but who are not forgiving. We pray today for our children, our brothers and sisters of different faiths, who are suffering in mind, in body and spirit especially in Syria, in the Yemen, in Lebanon, in parts of Africa, and where the Coptic Christians are living in fear, in Cairo, for fear of more reprisals and bombings in their beautiful cathedral. We call on the Divine Mother to implant in all our hearts today the Divine Feminine Energies, And I send love, light and blessing today to my enemies, to those who've slandered me on the internet, to those who've made life difficult for us, and to those who refuse to accept forgiveness. We pray especially for those men and women who say they love God, 
but who've become psychotic in their quest to control others. We send them love. We send them a blessing on this first day of this new year. We ask God's blessing on all of our friends, the members of our community, on this live stream channel that's free, and on the Frank Clara Abbey of Peace and Compassion that is alive in the ethers, waiting to manifest itself. So let us now reach out to one another. Let us touch hands, the hands of spirit, and form a circle of love around our sacred planet and let us hold the children of God especially those who refuse to allow God God's love into their lives Amen Amen We pray the Lord's Prayer from the original translation of the Aramaic from a beautiful booklet called Prayers of the Cosmos. It's an awesome little book. O birth their father, mother of the cosmos, focus your light within us, make it useful, create your reign of unity now. Your one desire then acts with ours as in all light, so as in all forms. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight, Loose the cords of mistakes binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' guilt. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. From you is born all ruling will, the power and the life to do, the song that beautifies all from age to age, it renews. Truly power to these statements. May they be the ground from which all my actions grow. Amen. And now we shall conclude with the beautiful prayer of peace from St. Francis. Lord, make us a channel of your peace. Where, there's, where there is hatred, we may bring your love. That where there is wrong, we may bring your spirit of forgiveness and love, that where there is discord, we may bring harmony, that where there is error, we may bring truth, that where there is doubt, we may bring faith, that where there is despair, we may bring hope, that where there are shadows, we may bring light, that where there is sadness, we may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand as to be understood, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that one receives. It is by self-forgetting that one finds, and it is forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. The animals of the earth are among God's very special creatures. They help us work, carry us, guard our homes at night, and best of all, they bring us joy and laughter. St. Francis of Assisi. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I wish you a truly blessed day, the first day of the rest of a new year, but the first day of the rest of your life. Have a peaceful day. May God reward you until we meet again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>